Hi everyone, here's the Bookemics once again. Today I'm reviewing The Four Horsemen by my good friend Gregory Dowling, which is the sequel to 2015's Ascension, one of my favorite books from that year, and which is yet another awesome thriller, mystery, spy story set in the Venice of the 18th century, perfectly beautifully portraying, you know, life in such a peculiar city with all its many contradictions. Within the literary world there is this ongoing debate about the nature of historical fiction, which is a very slippery concept. It's as slippery as the whole idea of travel literature or travel fiction which is, again, a problematic idea, because in a sense all fiction is about traveling, all fiction is about people moving in space, uh, with the possible exception of, you know, waiting for Godot and such, and at the same time many people will tell you that all, is, all literature, all fiction, in a sense, is historical fiction, but even more than that, the whole conundrum at the heart of the genre is that historical fiction inevitably is told from the perspective of a writer who lives in an era that's different from that of the action. And so certain people, some people will tell you that historical fiction doesn't exist, it's a myth, because it is never about the historical period that's being portrayed, it's always about, it's, it's always about the present where the work is being written. I see the point there, but I do think it's kind of bullshit, because I think there is an artistry in being able to portray, you know, sure, details of everyday life, uh, the setting of a specific city or nation in the past, but most importantly in being able to portray the mind frame of a specific century, a specific age, while at the same time being able to make that mind frame accessible to contemporary readers. It's something you find in the great historical novels, which of course exist, it's something you find in the Bethrodet, if you're Italian, uh, I promise his posi, you know what I'm talking about, it's something that's definitely there in Dowling's novels. And the fact that he chose to set his novels in the 18th, 18th century Venice gives him a good chance to draw some parallels between Venice of the present, present and Venice of that time without any of these two dimensions overwhelming the other. This is not a novel about the past for its own sake, but it's not even a novel that uses the past to serve any sort of political purpose. Those parallels I was talking about mainly have to do with the fact that in both these periods Venice is an independent city, it's not, you know, under foreign rule as in the 19th century, but at the same time it has lost much of its former power. And while in a, in a certain way it still thinks about itself as a merchant empire, as the center of the world in a sense, at least of the naval world, it is in many ways a city that lives on tourism. And in both these ages, Venetians themselves, this of course creates all sorts of contradictions, and Venetians themselves look at foreigners, sometimes often, as people who, you know, uncultured people who are unable to appreciate the true beauty of the city. Whereas foreigners look upon Venetians as, you know, people who live in the past and as a, uh, look upon the city as a city of sin, as a city of decadence. And these contradictions, these two sides of the coin, are there in Venice and you can, f you can breathe them with the air if you live there long enough, you can breathe them with, you know, all the grudge uh, locals have toward tourists with this love-hate relationship the city has with the outer world, and you can feel it in Dowling's novel too, most definitely. In that sense, even more than, you know, in all the beautiful portrayal of, you know, Venetian palaces and Venetian parties and Venetian districts, which is there, it's there in the novel, uh, there's plenty of that in here, it's in the portrayal of the many contradictions of life in Venice that Dowling's picture of the city shines so beautifully and feels so truthful to me, having lived in Venice for two years. He talks at one point about a thing that happens to everyone, happened to me all the time in Venice, when you get lost, uh, you, everyone gets lost all the time in Venice, and you end up in a calle or in an alley, you have no idea where you are, but you, pre you still pretend you went there on purpose, and you know, you contemplate the, the palaces around you for a while, you take a look at the canal, and you don't admit even to yourself that you're actually lost, you just pretend you went there on purpose to enjoy the scenery, and then after a while 
you go away. Another thing Dowling portrays beautifully in Four Horsemen is how fragmented Venice is as a city. In the 18th century, and in many ways still nowadays, this is a place where people living adjacent to one another, people in Eastern Venice and in Western Venice, still think of themselves as very much different nations, very much different universes. And when you have a city with such a mind frame, you can imagine how they can possibly look at foreigners, but at the same time you can imagine the beauty when you get a character, for instance from Eastern Venice, recognizing that you know people from Western Venice can enjoy life too, and that at the end of the day, in a way we are all the same, whether we are from Castello, whether we are from, you know, Dorso Duro, or whether we are from, you know, we are Turks, we are from the Middle East, we are from North Africa. And that's great, and all of these reflections do not feel forced at all, they just come up from the text, they're just there maybe in the span of a single paragraph for you to enjoy, and they always sustain a very thrilling narrative. I haven't, st I haven't talked about the plot yet, and of course I won't talk about, you know, details of it, but The Four Horsemen, even more than Ascension, is very quick, jumps very quickly into action, basically on page 3 you already have a chase, and it features so a few uh, parallel storylines that keep feeding on one another and sometimes you know uh, take you off track and uh, one character you you was sure was an asshole turns out to be actually a quite great guy and vice versa and just as with ascension you really get the feeling that you are reading maybe a few stories wrapped around a single novel which further gives you the idea that you're reading you know a slice of the life of this character, of this Cicerone, basically a guide for tourists, uh, turned uh, also works as a secondary job, he works as a spy for the Venetian government. Another thing I loved about this book is that this is very much a book by a literature fan, by a literature scholar, this is a book, as much as it is a thriller, as much as it's filled with action, this is a book where characters attend poetry readings and, you know, uh, recite poetry by heart, it is, uh, that side of it is never overwhelming. Gregory Dowling is British, uh, but he's lived in Italy since forever, and he teaches American literature at Venice University. And there's a thing with Italian professors, university professors writing fiction, which is that many of them tend to be terrible novelists. I've read quite a few novels by Italian professors back in the day, and many of them tend to have a single fatal flow, which is that they're clearly written by people who have spent their lives studying a very specific topic, which may be, you know, the witch trials in um, 17th century Como, it may be medieval history, it may be Latin literature, and somehow they are clearly convinced that the rest of the world is as interested in their specific topic as they are, even at the expense of, you know, stuff such as the plot or the characters. Even The Name of the Rose by motherfucking Umberto Eco, which is kind of my favorite novel from a guy who was kind of right about everything uh, in life, even that book, in my opinion, the whole parts about medieval history, about medieval philosophy and about um, theological discussions back in those days, those parts felt a little bit heavy to me and kind of made the whole thing much slower than it could have been. In With Dowling that never happens, you never get that uh, stuff, you never get his passion for poetry get in the way, far from it, it adds another layer to the book which makes it very pleasant if, like him, you also are a literature fan. Overall, very simply put, I really am a big fan of this series. I read this book in the span of two days, be even before its publication date, and immediately regretted it, because now I'll have to wait for the third volume and I really feel like reading the adventures of Alvise and Fabrizio and all the characters again. Uh, it's not even that I'm nostalgic about the places described in the book, I'm very nostalgic about my time in Venice, but I spent most of my years in Venice in Dorso Duro San Paolo, western part of town, and the book is not all of it, but it's largely set in Castello, and really the farthest east I would venture when I was there was probably Santa Maria Formosa, the Querini library, but still, I loved all of the places here described. If you're interested in those contradictions I talked about, in learning about Venice from the perspective of someone who knows it intimately, rather than, you know, 
uh, Venice as just a place of nice palaces and romantic gondola trips down the Canal Grande, which do not exist in real life, do absolutely watch Ruga Juffa, which is an amazing, hilarious web series discussing precisely that side of Venice, the side no one ever talks about. Uh, uh, you have to speak Italian though, because there are no English subtitles. There already are uh, subtitles because large parts of the, uh, the, the series is in Venetian, so you'll need, you know, the Italian subtitles to understand it. If you don't speak Italian, sucks to be you. One final question, this is the sequel to Ascension, which one is better and where should you begin if you have not read the series? Uh, it's not a matter of being better or worse. I think uh, these are in many ways different books. As I mentioned, The Four Horsemen jumps into action much quicker. It's much more fast-paced than Ascension. Ascension, you know, the first half uh, was largely a setup for what was to come in the second half. But at the same time, I felt, I felt like Ascension spent much more time setting the stage when it came to talking about Venice and presenting life in the city in the 18th century and giving you more historical details about life uh, for all the different social classes in town. So if you haven't read the series, I'd suggest do begin with Ascension because that gives you a better idea of the setting. If you have already read Ascension, by all means do read The Four Horsemen, is an awesome sequel. That's it. Let me know if you've read either of these books, if you like them as much as I do. Thanks to the good guys at Polygon for my review copy of the book. And let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.